On this planet, there are somewhere around 200 different countries and country-like territories. In each country, there's generally a distinct government, language, currency, immigration and visa policy, passport, and everything. In addition, if you are entitled to that country's passport, then that means that you are a citizen of that country. This means that that country's governments will allow you to stay, live, work, study, whatever you want, in that country for however long you like. But try getting a job in another country, and even after converting currencies, plug types, address formats, SIM cards, and other things, you will still need a special permit from the governments of that country in order to be allowed to remain and work there. In addition, if a particular government wants to solve an issue affecting the world or even a particular region, chances are likely they'll need a bit of help getting other governments on board. This, however, isn't always the case, especially in the world's multinational political and economic unions, many of which I've already talked about here on the channel. So, what are these international unions, and how many are there? First, we begin with probably the most well-known multinational union, the European Union. Comprising 27 countries on the continent of Europe, the European Union was established as the European Coal and Steel Community in 1951 by six founding members in the wake of the deadliest conflict in human history, gradually expanding and transforming from a mere economic union to a full-on political union where member country citizens can freely move to and even seek work in any of the others without having to worry about visas. In this spirit, a somewhat radical concept was also established in 1995 in the form of the Schengen Area, a large block of 26 countries that have completely done away with any sort of border control between them, and as such, they have also adopted their own joint visa policy, which in this situation really makes sense. So going from Paris to Rome via Copenhagen is essentially the same as going from Portland to Chicago via Denver, at least in how many times you have to get your passport checked. The EU is also famous for the Euro, a singular currency made to ease trade and symbolize the connections between these countries, although it hasn't always been met with flying economic success, especially in its early days. On the fringes of the EU is the European Economic Area, basically a DLC to the EU, which includes Norway, Iceland, and Liechtenstein, and means that they're kind of like EU members, mainly in freedom of movement for their citizens, but they don't get a voice in the EU Parliament, although they don't have to follow all the laws said Parliament passes. These countries all also participate in Schengen, which is why the citizens' line when going through immigration at a Schengen airport reads, European Union, European Economic Area, Confederatio Helvetica, or the Helvetic Confederacy, which is to say Switzerland, since they also participate in Schengen. Though it is by far the most successful example in achieving these kinds of goals amongst its members, at least aside from the unions that themselves became countries, I guess, the European Union isn't the only one of these kinds of unions, as one other notable continental union located immediately to the south is the African Union. Formed only in 2002, and based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and Durban, South Africa, the African Union, though it might not have yet achieved as much as the European Union has in Europe, does comprise a membership of every single country in Africa, with Morocco finally joining in 2017 after disputes regarding the membership of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. But that's a story for a whole other time. The goals of the African Union are, among other things, to achieve unity, territorial integrity, and promote peace and stability among African nations, and to promote and defend African interests on the world stage. One other goal is to establish an African economic community by 2023, with a singular currency they're thinking of calling the Afro, or maybe the Afrik, depending on how they feel, I guess, and also to establish an African central bank by 2028. Africa is currently home to numerous different economic unions, such as ECOWAS, ECOS, and several others, as well as many customs unions, notably the South African Customs Union. By the way, a customs union is essentially similar to what the Schengen area is for immigration in Europe, just for customs, so there aren't any tariffs or restrictions for goods being transported between member nations. In the north of Africa, though, and throughout the Arab countries of the Middle East, lies the Arab League a regional organization between Arabic governments founded in 1945 
to promote Arabic interests and mediate in disputes between members. Of course, within the Arab League, there are also organizations such as the Gulf Cooperation Council between Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Oman, Bahrain, Kuwait, and Qatar. Though do note that there is some drama going on with Qatar that we don't have time for here. The GCC is classified as a trade bloc and also features things like freedom of movement for their citizens, with each country allowing citizens of the others to enter and remain without a visa and even do so with just their national ID card. On the western side of the Arab League, however, is the Arab Maghreb Union, comprising of Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and Mauritania, together forming the region known as the Maghreb, from the Arabic term al-Maghreb, meaning the West. The AMU is an organization created to establish economic ties and a common market between the five countries, but which as of late has been somewhat dormant. Going northeast, out of the 15 countries of the former Soviet Union, nine of them are members of the Commonwealth of Independent States, all except the Baltics, Ukraine, and Georgia, with Turkmenistan as a mere observer state. The CIS is an intergovernmental organization meant to facilitate trade, cooperation, and the prevention of crime between these republics, and which was established literally right after the breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991. The members of the CIS, minus Azerbaijan and plus Ukraine, are also part of the Commonwealth of Independent States Free Trade Area, or CISFTA, simply a free trade area between these countries. And five of said countries are also part of the Eurasian Economic Union, featuring a common market among its member states. Lastly in this group is the Union State of Russia and Belarus, which is basically an agreement between the two countries to allow their citizens total freedom of movement across that now porous 1240km border. South America is also full of these such organizations, one of which being Mercosur, a trade bloc amongst four South American countries plus seven associated members. I already made a whole video about Mercosur last August, and although its member states do allow citizens of other members and associates to live and work in their countries after simply passing a background check, the bloc only truly encompasses the eastern part of South America. For the western part, we also have the Andean community, another trade bloc, this time between Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia, and with the goal of establishing a customs union between the four. Also, as you might have known from my passports video, these four countries also have a common passport color scheme going on. So that's most of the multinational unions of this type out there, though not all, with the noticeable exclusion of CARICOM and ASEAN, as well as several others. But the first two I've already made videos about as well, so I'll link those in the info cards for you. In fact, there are easily enough of these unions to talk about that I might make a part two about some of the lesser known unions, provided this video does well enough. Which, judging from my other videos on these topics, it probably will, but yeah, still. Thank you as always for watching. If you want to help out the channel, do be sure to like and share this video, follow me on Twitter and Instagram for updates, and all the other random crap I post. Consider getting some merch via the link below, and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.